Hello and welcome to all of you. You're watching Tech24. I'm Julia Seeger. In this edition, we tell you about an animal which is famous for its alien-like abilities. From regrowing damaged arms to changing their skin color and texture, we'll dig into what makes the octopus such a mysterious invertebrate, analyzing its sleeping patterns and social abilities. And in Test24, we try a set of devices to increase the safety of motorcyclists with a removable connected light by Cosmo Connected and the smart inflatable vest Cyrus. Now the octopus is an extraordinary creature and not only because of its eight limbs, three hearts, blue blood, ink squirting and camouflage capacity. Its neural system and decentralized brain are dazzling scientists. The Netflix documentary My Octopus Teacher has also been a huge hit, highlighting the social abilities of the invertebrate. Well, to talk more about it, let's now turn to our tech editor, Peter O'Brien. Hello, Peter. Hi, Julia. Now, some scientists are actually saying that if you want to try to think about what alien intelligence could actually look like, you should look to the octopus. Why is its brain so different and, and, and so dazzling indeed? Yeah, it's got about 500 million neurons, not just in its head, but across its whole body. So it's got them in its tentacles as well. That, by the way, is about the same number of neurons that a dog has. Now, between the head and the tentacles, there's something called a neural ring, and this allows their, its tentacles to essentially act independently and think independently of its head. So if, for example, you cut off one of the tentacles, it would continue foraging for food independent of the head. Sometimes, though, the whole octopus needs to work together as a unit, for example, to feed or to mate. And in that case, the head is more than happy to work alongside with the tentacles. That's right, Peter. And another interesting but sad fact is that it actually dies after mating. Thank you, Peter. To learn more about how this animal behaves, let's now welcome Anne-Sophie Darmayac, teacher and researcher at the University of Caen and the CNRS. Hello and welcome. Hi, Julia. Thank you for inviting me. So your studies are focusing on finding out whether an octopus has some kind of consciousness. What is leading scientists today to believe that the octopus, rather than any other animal, has somewhat of a consciousness? Well, um, consciousness in non-human animals is a very complex problem because it is a human concept. Uh, we have to distinguish primary consciousness and higher order consciousness. There is some evidence of primary consciousness in animals because it is a basic biological process lacking true language. Let me remind you that cephalopods are mollusks and they're cousins of snails and oysters, but they differ from their cousins by sophisticated learning and memory faculties and rich behaviors, as well as a complex brain. Uh, such evidences suggest uh, the possibility of conscious states in octopuses and other cephalopods. Uh, indeed, they have spatial cognition, they can make discriminations between different objects based on size, shape, they are able to use uh, tools in the wild, you probably know the, the coconut octopus, they have deceptive behaviors and so on. So they have amazing capabilities very similar to those of mammalian species. Now, another animal that is equally intelligent is the cuttlefish. Some members of your team have been looking at their episodic-like memory. What does that mean and what have they discovered? Um, in humans, episodic memory is the memory of the what, when and where components of a unique event that occurred in the past. This is autobiographic memory. In non-human animals, it is referred to as episodic-like memory because of the lack of evidence for the phenomenological aspects that go with episodic recollection in humans. We showed that cuttlefish are able to associate different prey with several uh, visual cues, the what, met in special locations, the where, and that prey species were available after different amounts of times, the when. Uh, this was the first evidence of such a memory in mollusks, and we are trying now to investigate it in octopuses. Now, all these studies that are conducted worldwide on cephalopods have now led the EU to include them in the bill regarding the use of lab animals. Does that actually mean that they are officially recognized as being able to feel emotions? Right. Cephalopods are the only invertebrates so far to be considered by the European legislation as sentient animals, just as vertebrates. 
Uh, sentience is the ability to be aware of one's surrounding or to have subjective experiences. So being able to address cuttlefish sentience is a great challenge for us. Um, we have current projects based on emotions in cuttlefish, actually. And among several experiments, we propose cuttlefish a choice between two shrimps, one bigger than the other. And then we propose an ambiguous choice between two shrimps of the same size. We have not finished yet the analysis of this experiment, but it seems that the latency to make a choice is longer when the choice is ambiguous. So there may be a link between decision making and emotions, and this could be a first step towards sentience in cuttlefish. Um, in addition, being able to highlight emotions in cephalopods may obviously help respect and enhance their well-being. And Sophie Darmayak, a teacher and researcher at the University of Caen, thank you very much indeed for that. Thank you very much. Now, Peter, we often talk about the octopus, but we don't often talk about the family that it belongs to, these tentacled beings. Yes, so the octopus is well known for its ability to learn, its ability to play and to socialize. It's been seen shoaling with fish, they've been observed to mimic each other's movement and behavior, and they've, of course, they can open all sorts of jars and pots and things like that, but there's the squid and there's also the cuttlefish. They all belong to the same grouping, and that's the coleoid, these squishy nautical animals with big heads and tentacles that can squirt ink and change color. Now, squids, for example, they change color when they want to send messages to each other, for example. They can also hunt in packs, and the cuttlefish is very smart because recently it passed something called the marshmallow test. Now, this was first tried on children. You put a marshmallow in front of a child and see if it will wait for um, two marshmallows in the future or take the one as it is. Cuttlefish have been shown to be for, most, for the most part, more patient than children because they're happy to wait for a nice, fresh, living shrimp rather than eat a dead one, which they're provided straight away. That's right. I actually know about the marshmallow challenge because I tried it with my three-year-old son and he failed miserably. <laughs> Thank you very much, Peter. Now, scientists in Brazil have also found that the octopus can experience two major alternating sleep states, very similar to those in humans. What's more, it might even dream. Studying other animals' sleeping and dreaming patterns is set to help scientists figure out why dreaming in general is so important and why the function has been preserved throughout evolution. Some theories state that it helps with memory, growth, and learning. Well, let's dive into the subject with our guest, Silvia Medeiros. Uh, hello and welcome. You're the author of this report and a PhD student at the Brain Institute of the Federal University of Rio Grande do Norte. It's good to have you. Thank you. Hello. <laughs> so what was your experiment all about and what did you discover about the octopus? We developed an experiment to investigate if octopus have more than one sleep state as mammals, birds, and some reptiles. And we discovered we discover that octopus has two sleep states, a quiet and an active sleep state. During the quiet sleep, the animal shows pale skin and the eye pupils is contract to a slit. During the active sleep, the animals dynamically change the skin color and texture and move the eyes. What makes it more interesting is that during active sleep, uh, it, the active sleep most occurs after a long quiet sleep, and it has a periodicity that it, that rec with recurrency of around uh, 30 minutes. Well, Silvia Medeiros, thank you very much indeed for speaking to us here on Tech24. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much for the opportunity. Now, Peter, before we close this chapter about the octopus, you want to talk about a very unusual creature. Yes, it's the Nautilus. It's another cephalopod. And it's this one, though, has got a shell and it's been around for a lot longer, so about half a billion years. And it seemingly has a much simpler brain than the others. For a long time, it's been dismissed as being just a kind of floating fossil, but actually it's been proved to have a very impressive memory and it's potentially the oldest existing species with the ability to learn. For me, this is a kind of reminder that while many animals may only be intelligent once we um, begin to really study them in depth and we don't even notice their intelligence to begin with, that doesn't make them any less worthy of our appreciation. So don't judge on appearances. Thank you very much, uh, Peter, for that. We're going to move on now to Test 24.
in this week's Test 24, we're going to take a look at a set of devices to increase your safety on the road and especially on motorcycles. I can see that Peter is all geared up already. Yes, I'm very safe over here, Julia. So let's start then with uh, Cosmo Connected. Yeah, so this is a smart brake light. And what it does is you can clip it onto a bag or onto the back of your helmet or the back of your bike. And it can sense when you brake and decelerate. Um, so it will light up when you do so. And you can even use this little device here to connect to your um, handlebars and make it work as an indicator. Now, if you get tipped off your bike, it will also sense if you're no longer moving and can connect the app to um, tell um, a family member or a friend to alert them. Now we have a second device, I think it's iRide. Yes, this is iRide. And as you can see, it's a heads up display which fits onto your motorcycle helmet. Now we've seen a few of these already, but this one is a little bit smarter because it is wireless. So it connects to the controller on the side here wirelessly. Um, now this does mean that you can use voice command to access your maps and your contacts, um, but being wireless, it has a bit of a weaker battery life. And what about the coat that you're wearing? Yeah, this of course. Jacket? Yeah, so this um, is a reflective jacket to use on a bike, but it has a trick up its sleeve. It has this canister of compressed air in here. And if it notice you, notices you go for a tumble, it will activate as an airbag and blow up completely, including around the neck, keeping you nice and safe. Um, it's the Cirrus airbag jacket mm -hmm. and it is expensive. It's over 700 euros, but it's certified to keep you safe in the case of an accident. That's right, Peter. And all of these devices are set to keep us safer. Thank you. That brings us to the end of this week's edition of Tech 24. We hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you soon.